My name is Eve, Eve Dushime. I, uh, I'm from Ru Rwanda, Central Africa originally, uh, but I grew up in Togo, West Africa. And uh, currently I'm a student in a, a suburb near Philadelphia, and uh, my parents reside in Buffalo, New York. Samaritan's Purse, Operation Christmas Child. How did you first hear about it? Um, well, back in Togo, growing up, when I was 11 years old, uh, they came into my community with a, a few hundred boxes, shoe boxes, uh, and uh, they started just distributing them. That was the first time I'd ever uh, encountered them. So in, in Togo, before the 200 boxes showed up, were you part of a, a church? Uh, yes, uh, my father was a pastor in Togo. Um, and uh, just, we always, you know, always trying to do outreach in the community, trying to uh, uh, spread the gospel and then bring people into the church. But one of the biggest uh, uh, struggle uh, issue that we had was um, people couldn't come to church. And the reason for that was because we were constantly surrounded by uh, like voodoo idol worshipers, uh, witch doctors, uh, witchcraft was a, was a huge thing. And, and that was persecution in itself because people were so afraid of what might happen to them if they went to church. Uh, therefore, they were, um, they didn't want to come to church. They were so afraid for their lives, they feared for their life, and uh, quite honestly, a lot of times they probably thought, we're not getting anything out of this, so why risk anything to go to church? People heard about these boxes that were going to be given, and everybody showed up. People just came. People who had sworn never to set foot in the church decided this was the day because Africans, we don't, we, we don't expect anything for free. So hearing that there were free gifts, completely free, excited people. It allowed people to be able to just come to church for these gifts. But before the gifts were uh, uh, distributed, the, the pastor preached the gospel. He, he gave them the message which allowed these people to just be able to hear about Jesus Christ. So it wasn't just these boxes showed up and then they gave them away and then they left and nothing happened. So there was an aftermath which allowed the church to grow, allowed people to know about Jesus, which is, you know, this is, that's the thing we, we, we that's our duty, our, uh, the Great Commission, to just go out and uh, make disciples of all nations. And this is what uh, Operation Christmas Child did in my community. So if you had to pick one image from your memory of, of that, that first day when hundreds of boxes are there in Togo, what, what picture stands out for you? I kind of remember opening uh, my, my shoe box and pulling things out. At the bottom of my uh, shoe box was a scarf, and I actually brought a scarf today. Um, this is the scarf that was at the bottom of my shoe box when I was 11 years old. And um, there is a funny thing about, you know, the scarf. Togo is a warm place. Um, 80, 90 degrees, easy, and never gets, the, you know, cold enough that people uh, wear scarves. I didn't even know what it was uh, until one of my youth pastors just kind of wrapped it around her neck. Um, but it was funny that I had gotten this and I, I thought to myself, why would anybody ever send me this scarf knowing the things that I'm going through? But obviously I didn't have the whole picture uh, because fast forward three years, uh, my family got a resettlement. Um, to Buffalo, New York, one of the coldest places in the U.S. <laughs> and I finally uh, realized that I could use the scarf. And um, the scarf not, uh, not, not only serves as a way for me to stay warm, but uh, as a reminder that God knows what's ahead. God knows our future. He has it in his hands. And he oftentimes drops clues left and right to let you know that he's in charge and, and he has a purpose for your life. And this is what it does. Uh, the scarf reminds me of. So right now we have hundreds of people who have taken shoe boxes, uh, all ages, um, retired folks, single people, right. little kids, and they're they're buying things and getting ready to put them together, and they have no idea where their box is going to go and who is going to receive it. How can our people best pray for that child? So it, it doesn't matter what you put in these boxes as long as. Uh, you pray for them and, and you follow um, uh, what God tells you, you know, to just kind of put, you know, in these boxes. They're going to find their proper destination. They're going to find their destined uh, um, a recipient and they're going to make a difference. When you pray for these boxes and you just 
uh, follow God in that way and you just pack them up with love and just send them with prayer, they're going to end up in the right place. Go Big Red! <laughs> yes. Is that, is that like a football team or something? <laughs> it's okay. the Huskers. It's the Huskers. Okay. Yeah. Go yeah. Huskers. Yeah.